Hi, this is Shakil Ahmed. Welcome to the SPSS Learning Tutorial. In today's tutorial, we learn how to perform a principal component analysis in SPSS. As many of you who have statistic background know that a principal component analysis is basically used to uh, reduce the dimension of data. When we have a lot of variable in our uh, analysis then we need to try to reduce the number of questions in our questionnaire or the number of variables in our data uh, for example you have made many variables uh, for example seven to eight variables represented as seven to eight questions or statement in a questionnaire and you uh, want to uh, decrease the number of questions and number of variables using some statistical technique and you want to create a new measurement scale uh, that is a new questionnaire but are unsure whether all the variables you have included mirror the construct you are interested in you test whether the construct you are mirroring load on to all basically uh, you are extracting a new concept or a new variable from the existing variables and you can uh, ensure that the new variable or the new extract represents the all other variables or the uh, new construct or component have a lot on the previous variables from which we have or uh, extracted so this is basic uh, purpose of the principal component analysis means we have a lot of variables and we are uh, extracting few components from those variables and the uh, maximum variation in the variables are explained by the few factors or components uh, so uh, we start with the basic assumptions of the principal component analysis uh, there are five basic assumptions of principal component analysis uh, first assumption is that uh, the multiple there should be multiple variables uh, all on continuous scale and there need to be a linear relationship between all variables uh, principal as the principal component analysis is based on Pearson correlation coefficient and the co Pearson correlation coefficient can on only be computed when we have a linear relationship between the variables and you should have a sampling adequacy you should have enough sample size uh, to produce a reliable uh, result and the data should be suitable for data reduction and there should be no significant outlier in our data so we have uh, divided the principal component analysis into seven different steps uh, i first uh, want to explain briefly all the steps uh, before going to the analysis in step one we just check the assumptions of the principal component analysis uh, through SPSS uh, the first uh, assumption is the, the second assumption was the linearity and the linearity of the variables can be checked through scatter plot uh, and uh, sampling adequacy is checked using Kessler mayer olkin uh, Kessler mayer olkin is basically a the proportion a statistic which is a proportion of the variance explained uh, and uh, a smaller value of the uh, KMO is preferred for the analysis data suitable for reduction with Bartlett test of severity for fourth assumption that our data is stable for reduction or not and the assumption 5 outlier can be checked through the uh, values of standard deviations uh, as the value beyond the 3 standard deviation is uh, often considered as the outlier 
then we come to the st step two in step two uh, we inspect the initial extracts of components at this point there will be as many components as the variable if we have or uh, 10 variables then we obtain uh, 10 components so uh, we just check these uh, components and uh, choose the component appropriately or we choose the a number of component on the basis of initial eigenvalues so step 3 will provide four guidelines for choosing the uh, components meaning com meaningful components on the uh, we can choose the components on the basis of eigenvalues eigenvalue one criteria uh, this criteria suggests that uh, the components having eigenvalue more than one one or more is considered as the factor uh, we keep and the remaining factor factors uh, or the remaining components we uh, left or return uh, the second option is that proportion of total variance explain if we three components uh, if we have 10 variables and two uh, components have 80 percent or explain 80 percent variation in data then the two components uh, are enough for the analysis or instead of the 10 variables uh, you can use the secret plot test uh, for uh, which is uh, constructed on the basis of eigenvalue to see the uh, adequacy of the components we keep use the interpretability criterion you need to consider why you would use one of these option or another this is your a theoretical interpretation about the scenario you are going to take or you are going to discuss you also have to consider the type of rotation you selected uh, uh, you have to opt for uh, one of the following rotation uh, type very max and direct obling quartimax and equimax uh, these are all used to rotate the axis if we have uh, first uh, two axis for example x and y then after rotation we have z and uh, w and z or z1 and z2 two new axis and that are based on components so there are many methods of uh, choosing the rotation axis in step 4 if you have not chosen to retain the number of components initially presented by SPSS then you can forcefully extract the com com uh, extraction using SPSS you can uh, assign the number of or you can choose the number of uh, extracted components by yourself in SPSS SPSS have an option of uh, manually setting the number of components and in step 5 uh, you need to interpret the final rotated solution a uh, total variance explained uh, is b basically used for this purpose and rotated component matrix is also used and the step uh, 6 report your result uh, in your result you need to report all the decisions you made during your uh, analysis and the criterion of, of extracting the components and which are which type of rotation you used in your analysis th that all are should be mentioned you in your analysis uh, finally in step uh, 7 uh, you have complete your analysis and you will often want to assign a score to each component for each participant uh, so we start with uh, uh, this data here we have uh, question 1 question 2 question 3 question 4 question 5 question 6 question 7 and question 8 there are eight questions in this questionnaire and uh, we are going to find uh, 
factors i have already computed the factors here first i delete these ones and uh, then uh, we can start the analysis from the option of dimension reduction and then go to the option of factor i have already uh, uh, filled all the variables uh, in the variable box and we will go to the option of descriptive in descriptive you tick on initial solution and uh, correlation matrix of the coefficient and uh, you if you want to reproduce your result then you tick on reproduce and empty image if you want to see the empty uh, image or we can check KMO and Bradlett test of sphericity for our uh, sample size adequacy and then continue and uh, come to the extraction uh, we want to extract correlation matrix and unrotated factor solution and secret plot and uh, we are extracting the uh, components based on eigenvalue greater than 1 and click on continue and then rotation uh, we are using quad maximum uh, criteria for uh, rotation uh, rotating the axis and uh, you can also display the rotated solution and uh, loaded plot loading plot and then continue if you want to display the uh, factor score coefficient matrix then you click on the display factor score coefficient matrix if you want uh, your factors as variable and then you can click on this option and then continue and finally on option you can sort uh, your display format by size uh, then you can click on this option and then click on ok this is your correlation matrix uh, these, these are the co Pearson correlation between your uh, variables there are 8 variables uh, all the variables are written on column wise as well as on uh, row wise and these are the correlation between the variables KMO Bradlett test is applied uh, which provide a significant result Uh, using chi-square test and uh, we uh, conclude that the KMO Prelder test provide uh, that the sample size is adequate for the analysis and the principal components uh, are these are communities uh, which are extracted from the our initial results uh, we had uh, 8 variables and we found 8 communities or components with different loads and this is these are the initial eigenvalues these are the total uh, variances and these are the percentage of variances and these are the cumulative percentages the hundred percent variance is explained on earth component uh, if we uh, select uh, four components then we can say that 72 percent uh, variation in data is explained by the first four components and extraction sum of square uh, loading uh, we have extracted one uh, con two components component one and component two and the 51% uh, variation in the data is explained by the by these two factors and these are rotation sum of square loading and the secret plot also suggests that uh, the two components component one and component two uh, 
are greater than one and these two uh, components can be extracted from our data these are the two extracted components component one and component two and these are the load loading on the component one and component two from for each variable for there are eight variables and uh, these values are the uh, loading of factor one and factor two for example question one have 72 percent load on uh, component one but only 11 percent on component two these are uh, reproduced result based on your uh, two factors and this is the ro rotated component matrix the rotated component matrix uh, basically uh, provide the score uh, corresponding to each uh, component for each variable and this is the component transformation matrix uh, which is component 1 component 1 and this is the relationship between component 1 and component 2 and this is component plot in rotated axis and this plot is obtained after rotating the data on uh, component 1 to component 2 uh, basically this uh, there were 8 variables uh, in the data and now we have 2 components and this is the uh, graph between the uh, scatter plot between the component 1 and component 2 and these are component score coefficient as we already discussed here as a rotated component matrix uh, but this is component score coefficient matrix and component score covariance is also given uh, so you need to report all these uh, tables carefully by using the steps we discussed uh, uh, earlier uh, but keep in mind that uh, you need to clarify the uh, assumptions first and then uh, write your uh, criterion uh, for uh, each step and report your result uh, for the final components you extracted and the a score for each variable on that component uh, appropriately so if you have any confusion or uh, any uh, query regarding this uh, tutorial you can write in comment section uh, thank you for watching the video